I don't know. I don't know what I thought DMX stood for. But use in the comments, thank you my commenters, because you school me every day, told me that DMX stood for Dark Man X. How many of you knew that? I don't hear nobody out there. Hold it down. 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 Hold it but the rich kids would buy them anyway so they could show them off in the cafeteria. Look what I got, the new red matchbox. Since their parents would find the cars if they bought them home, they'd leave them in their desks at school. So during detention, when the teacher would go to the office or step out to have a cigarette, I would just raid their desks and grab all the toys I could find. The next day, the kids would know it was me that took them because I was the only one who had to stay after. But they couldn't say anything because they weren't supposed to have them in the first place. And I'd probably spit on them for snitching. After a while, some of the smarter kids thought they could hide their goods after school without me noticing. But I saw you, I saw you try to hide that matchbox in your desk behind your notebook. Now all I got to do is wait you out. I bet you go home before me, punk. And when you leave, your car is mine. It was like I was a step ahead of everyone around me. One time I actually had the main office believing that I had moved, that I had a different address and phone number so that they could never find my mother to tell her what I was doing didn't matter. Earl gonna do what he wanna do anyway. When my mother finally came to the school wondering why she hadn't got any letters from them in a while, they told her, well, Earl, Look so sincere. I understand why school 18 had no idea what to do with me. To them, they were just supposed to be good, smart kids and bad, dumb ones. But I wasn't either of those. Yeah, it was a combination. The smarter I got, the more bored I got. And the more bored I got, the more trouble I caused. Then no one cared how smart I was. It was a effed up cycle through it all. I just felt that I wasn't being heard. I wasn't being allowed to fly. Where did you want to fly? Where did you, I don't understand. Like, oh my God, this woe is me, it's wearing me out. One day I didn't go home after school. Me and this kid named Baron had detention together and afterwards he invited me over to his house. He had a pretty sister, so first we hung out with her, then we went to the supermarket, stole some gum, and stayed outside to play. After a few hours running around, we found this big car tire in this garage near his house. It was already after dark, and I had never been out this late by myself before, but we were having so much fun rolling the tires up and down this little hill, watching it crash into things. I didn't want to stop. It was a school night. I had a pocket full of gum, a tire, freedom, fuck the world, man. Then we saw the flashing lights of a police car. There weren't any street lights where we were playing, so the blue and red colors lit up everything. I thought the police were coming to mess with us for the tire until I saw my mother in the back seat. Oh shit, we're in trouble. Let me out of here, let me out of here. She started screaming, that's my baby. The cops got out first. Do you know how much you scared your mother, Earl? I shook my head. Then they asked me if I wanted to go home and I shook my head again. I could see the belt curled up in my mother's lap. As soon as he saw the cops, Baron had run back around the corner to his house. I wish that was him. Listen, what's profound about this moment is that Lil Earl believes that his mother doesn't give two shits about him. But when he saw how hurt his mother was because she thought something had happened to him, 
he snapped out of it. Oh, my mom really do care about me. A lot of the things that Earl was going through are the same things that I went through as a child of a 15 year old. Yes, in that moment, I was hurt, I was upset, but as I became an adult, my mother didn't really have the tools. She didn't really know what she was doing. So I'm not angry with her. And when I think of the, the times that I felt like she didn't love me, I can reflect on other times as I grew when I realized Okay, she just didn't know what she was doing. Like he harped on so many negative things. This book is full of negativity. You mean to tell me y'all, you and your mammy ain't have one good day? One good day, dear Max? You and your mammy ain't going on a picnic together, walk down the street together and see the sun shining together? Y'all ain't have one good day? Oh. I'm just so glad to see that you're okay, baby. You had me so scared, Earl. So I'm not going to do anything to you this time, okay? I'm just happy to see you. Then she paused and stared at me right in my face. But if you ever do that again, I'm gonna dot, dot, dot. Two days later, I did it again. And I just believe some children are just, I don't even wanna call him bad. It's just something just is not connecting. And that's what I believe, just something and DMX just did not connect with his behavior. And I can see how he ended up turning to drugs because the only thing I believe that settled him was something to alter his mind. And unfortunately, a lot of people use street drugs, self-medicate, that's what they call it. I used to stay getting beaten, extension cords, hangers, brooms. My sister used to always cry, yell at my mother to stop but never did. After a while, it became normal. If that's all you know, as a kid, you get used to it. It's just your life. Word. I stayed wanting to play outside though. Everybody else got to play outside. Why do I have to go straight home upstairs in the effing house? F you. I wanna do what the rest of the kids get to do. Let me live, lady. My mother didn't understand that parents got scared of kids they never saw outside because that's what they used to do with crazy kids, keep them in the house. Make sure you don't play with that Earl. Something ain't right with him. Something wasn't right with you, DMX. Something wasn't. That's why you ended up self-medicating with drugs and unfortunately, they didn't come up with a plan for you. you. His ass should have been on some kind of IEP. I don't care how, how smart he was. Make sure you don't play with that Earl. Something ain't right with him. I used to hear parents tell their kids all the time, or my friends used to come up to me and tell me. My mama said, I can't play with you no more. After a while, only the homeless kids around School Street could mess with me, or the kids with the parents who were high or didn't give a F. By this time, my father had disappeared too, so I couldn't complain to him about my mother's rules. At first, he would call to say he was taking me to New York and then never show up. Then he just stopped calling altogether. Life for me was very different at 19 Lamerton Terrace. That's because the house belonged to Mary Ella Holloway, my grandmother. My father was one of her 11 kids, eight boys and three girls and was the first to add another baby to the family. So I was her first grandson. Now I recall him having so much pain when his grandmother passed. I believe, I recall him saying that it hurt him so bad because in his grandmother's eyes, he was pure because he hadn't disappointed her to the capacity where she gave up on him. Everybody else gave up on him. So he loved his grandmother. He should have loved his mother too, because although his mother was disappointed in him, he could have turned that around. I just don't believe he just had the mental capability to turn it around. Since everyone else lived in the projects or tiny apartments, grandma's house was the home base for my father's side of the family. 
and I knew that any time I could, could make it over there, four or five of my aunts and uncles would be there too. Needless to say, I wanted to take the bus to grandma's as much as I could. Most of my aunts, Rhonda, Raquella, and uncles, Jarvis, Buckeye, were much older than I was, but two of my uncles, Collins, who we call Coley, or BJ, and Kinsley, better known as Buzzy, were a little younger than me, so the three of us became like brothers. Part of the reason I loved going over to my grandmother's house was that I knew I could hang out with them and we were allowed outside to play. I felt loved at my grandmother's house. I can remember the gospel music playing on Sunday mornings when I woke up. My grandmother singing Amazing Grace and even though I never saw my father over there, grandma felt like the place I was supposed to be. It was also the place to find the best Sunday dinner. My mother rarely let me stay at my grandmother's for more than a weekend, but me, Coley, and Buzzy made sure we made the most of our time together. If we weren't staying up all night watching Godzilla movies or Saturday Night Live, betting each other who could be the man and stay awake the longest, we'd be playing truth or dare, although I don't ever remember any truths being told. I was always the double dare man, constantly challenging the two of them to try something crazy or more dangerous. Because I was a year older, I was bigger than both of my uncles at the time, taller and probably stronger too. So I had an unfair advantage when it came to anything physical, and I was more reckless. Eventually, my grandmother left La Martine Terrace for a larger house on Warburton Avenue a few blocks away. By the middle of fifth grade, school 18 still did not know what to do with me. It was like the higher I scored on tests, the further I threw the eraser. And after I left Mrs. Smith's class, none of my teachers ever took me aside anymore. There were no one-on-ones or heart-to-heart -heart conversations. They just punished me and sat me in the back or sent me to the office. I guess my teachers felt it was too much trouble to get into my head and figure out what was wrong. Not that it would have been easy. Okay. Okay, well, that was, I mean, that was an adult-like thing for him to say because he's got to own up to his own bullshit. As an adult, as a child, I understand you not really getting it. But as an adult and you're reading this, there should be sentences in here that says, as an adult, I see now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, ugh, it's like you don't never had no good days. Earl. School 18 was no more than your typical ghetto school. And in Yonkers, the only city in America to have not abided by Brown versus Board of Education and desegregated and desegregated their public schools. It was hard to find good teachers. The best teachers rarely came to teach poor black kids. But it was the school's main office that started to notice how often I seemed to come into the building with a busted lip or couldn't sit down because of the welts on my behind. One day when my lip was badly swollen, they pulled me into a meeting with the guidance counselor and asked me what happened. I got a beating. What do you mean what happened? I answered them. My mother said that if I just stopped being bad, she wouldn't have to punish me so much. She just didn't know how to get me from doing wrong. So it was suggested that she take me to a child psychologist. And the next week we went down to see a man who worked out of St. Mary's Church next to the hospital. That's funny. The, the teachers ain't suggested that, that the mammy and DMX the dark man X, y'all, I had no idea. You in the comments told me that hit DMX stood for dark man X. Where the fuck I been all this time? I was just like DMX. I don't know, dick him down man X. I don't know. I don't know what I thought DMX stood for. But you in the comments 
Thank you, my commenters, because you schooled me every day. Told me that DMX stood for Dark Man X. How many of you knew that? The mama and the son should have been around there at the church getting some psychological help. Let me tell you what his problem was with this guy. It's like, oh, this poor boy got so many issues. I feel so bad for him. What happened was he went to see the man, the psychologist, and the psychologist has said to him, pick a toy or psychiatrist, whoever. The therapist or whoever was like, pick a toy, pick any toy, and you can have that toy. DMX went to the box with all the cars in it, but he pulled out the fire truck. Okay, I want this toy, this is a fire truck. The psychiatrist, psychologist, therapist, LSW, whatever, was like, you can't have that. At that point, DMX had made up in his mind that the psychologist, therapist, whoever, I don't know, I'm surmising, was full of shiz. So he ain't say Nathan else to the guy. He ain't had no words for him. I can take that two ways. I don't know. I'm not a therapist, okay? Even though I just talk about my experiences in life that I've learned from, okay? It's two ways that I can look at that. You know, I'm a Libra, okay? One, the psychiatrist was full of shit. Two, he wanted to see how he handled disappointment. So it could have been either one. The man could have been full of shit or he was testing him. Right then and there, I decided he was full of shiz and I don't know if that was the only reason, but although we went there a few more times, I never spoke to that man again. After that, my mother felt she had no other option for me. And by the end of the fifth grade, I had thoroughly zapped out. I was fighting all the kids, throwing chairs at teachers. I just didn't care about anything. So I took it as far as I could. The worst thing a teacher could do was to try to restrain me. Don't effing touch me. Are you crazy? I'll effing kill you, you flat ass coffee drinking B. 18 had had it. The judge told my mother that since she was incapable of keeping me out of trouble, the courts had to intervene. And so I was sent to Julia Dykeman Andrus Children's Home, a school slash dormitory facility about 20 minutes away from our house. The term was 18 months. It was the beginning of my incarceration. I was 10 years old. My favorite go-go song. <clears throat> Taking a ride on the east side, made a left on MLK. What a beautiful day, what a beautiful day. Riding high on the west side, looking for a hood where to play. Won't you come out and play? Won't you come out and play? Hey, taking a ride. Hey, hey, on the south side. Ooh, ooh, hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 we like that good. Say what? <laughs>